yarn note brew. You need to go to the gym, eh? You need to exercise those glutes. You see mine? Exercised. Exercised. I'm gonna try, gonna try, gonna try. Work till I die, till I die, till I die. I'm gonna fail and get up, cause I'm not giving up on my dream. Hey beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kapana Shimangi and this is how I do things. A show where you send me your questions and I'll let you know how I would do things. Now I can take it as advice or use it as entertainment. Use it, don't use it, take it, don't take it. Do what you will with it. Listen, I'm no pro. I am no professional at all. I'm just letting you know what I would do if I was in your shoes. How is it that some people can be so consistent and so into this gym life thing? Okay, because there's this summer body that we're trying to work towards. This elusive figure. This figure that literally has like this tiny waist, big booty, nice thighs. How? How are we supposed to do that? How? I don't know. I don't know. Some people are really able to make this gym life part of their everyday routine. It is part of their lifestyle. It is engraved in who they are. But the rest of us, we try. We get our memberships at the beginning of the year. We buy all the clothes that we need to go. So we look cute when we go to the gym. But then come a month later, uh, crickets. We haven't exercised. It's been a while. It's really, oh, it's been, it's been a hot minute. How? How do we make gym part of our lives? How do we stop ourselves from getting demotivated? How do we become consistent with this thing? And how do we see real changes? I've been trying to work on this booty for long. Where is it? Where? Is it somewhere that I have to go pick it up and put it on? Maybe? I don't know. Because I've seen people go from twiggy 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 to thin waist and big booty and people who have lost like 30 kgs and you're just like, Sis, tell us, please, tell us, huh? Because baby pooch is still here. Mm. Number one, it, there's, there is a very big difference, right? Between chasing fitness and chasing a specific body. And personally, I think that it becomes quite a dangerous thing when we start to go to gym or to exercise because we're chasing a body. We want this waist, we want this booty, and we want these type of thighs. Hmm. I prefer to chase fitness. Fitness is the ability to move your body. It is the ability to run. It is the ability to move. Having the mobility and having the endurance to get through the day. How do these actually impact your life? You want a better sex life? Babes, let me tell you about how you ride it. If you want to learn how to ride it, squat, run. Why? You last longer, you can be on top for longer. The sex life just improves in so many ways. When you are fit, my love, just being able to just stay on your thighs. I'm on my thighs right now, y'all can see it. There we go, I'm on my thighs. Huh? I'm on my haunches. You're able to stay for longer. I'm here to tell you the truth, man. And this just leads me to number two, the goal. What are you working towards? There's an ideal body that I've always wanted for a very long time. And I was just like, I really want that body. And then I started to become fit. And I started to realize how my body was shaped and how my body looks when it is fit. So I chased fitness first. And then I saw how my body started to look when I was fit. Small waist, my bum was right up here, you know? But it wasn't because I was chasing that specifically. I was chasing fitness first and then the body second. Because many of us are chasing a specific body, which makes us do a lot of lifting, a lot of squats, but then our endurance is not there at all because there's no cardio. We're so busy doing squats, we're so busy doing sit-ups for our abs that we can't endure anything. The endurance is not there. We're building up the strength in our arms, but we're not building the ability to last. Our heart rates aren't going up. We aren't able to run for a good distance. When you are running and doing cardio and focusing on your endurance, those things help with your heart, with your ability to last. Those are lifting your fitness levels. So it's about that balance. So whatever goal that you have, you want to have a goal that is balanced, working on both strength and endurance, being able to lift the things that you need to lift, carry your body, be able to have the strength, but 
still being able to run away from that dog when it chases you and not get too tired. So a goal should be linked to activity rather than the body, right? And this is at the beginning. Once you get into the habit of being at gym and once you get into the habit of fitness, then you can start to work on the shape that you want. That's how I've found it. The first part should be about the ability and the consistency. Once you get into being fit, once you've raised your endurance, once you've raised your mobility, once you've raised your strength, then you can work on the specific body that you want. Number three, go ahead, go buy all of the fitness things that you want, okay? I'm saying this because we need that little bit of motivation at the beginning. A lot of people are just like, don't buy the extra gym stuff. No, 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 no. You don't need them to start exercising. But if you want that extra something to motivate you, go ahead, go buy all the gym things that you want. Because once you've bought them, you realize how much money you're wasting if you don't exercise. That's how my brain works. My brain is just like, I've bought these weights and I haven't used these weights since I bought them. So you know what? I don't wanna waste with money. So I'm gonna start exercising. So if it means that going to go buy the new shorts and the new tops and all of those things is gonna get you motivated to get started, do it. Do whatever you need to get yourself motivated. You don't need the gym equipment. You don't need the clothing to stop you from exercising. However, if it is something that will motivate you, do it. Get that program that you pay extra for on your phone. Do all of the things, the little things that you can get to motivate you to get started. Do it. Motivation is important. Motivation fades, yes, but if you need, if it can get you started, because many of us don't get started. So whatever you want to get started, get it, it's fine. So many people will tell you, don't do it. If you want the motivation, go ahead and get it. If it's gonna get you to start, if it's gonna kick you in the bum to get off the couch, do it. Whatever you need to get motivated, babe, just get the motivation you need. Number four is the thing that's honestly going to make you succeed from the get-go. Is to start small. Small, 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 Start small. And what do I mean by small? 10 minutes a day. 10. You scroll through your phone for 10 minutes a day. Sometimes you poop for 10 minutes a day. Sometimes your shower is way too long. Just decrease the time picking in. You take an hour to get ready in the morning. How about you just take that 10 minutes, subtract from that, just 10 minutes to exercise. I tell you, that's all you need. How I do it is that I get up, I wear a top, I don't even wear pants, top and a panty, and I do my 10 minute exercise a day. And I get my 10 minutes in every day. It becomes so easy to fit in 10 minutes. It's so easy to fit in 10 minutes. 10 minutes, everybody has 10 minutes in a day, everyone but not everybody has an hour. We set this goal and we're just like, I want to exercise for 60 minutes every day. Now you've created this huge problem of where am I gonna find 60 minutes? Many people struggle to find the 60 minutes because I don't have the motivation to find the 60 minutes. And honestly, my time is expensive. And that 60 minutes, I'm not finding it. So we find all these excuses about this, ten, this 60 minutes. I don't have the time to go to the gym because I have to first get up, get dressed, go to the gym, be in the gym, then come back. So the whole exercise actually ends up taking me two hours. Problem, we're not gonna go to the gym. When we think about the hour that we have to take and we're pushing everything back by an hour in our life or we're waking up a whole hour earlier, so many ways to fail with that one hour setting. So when you're starting off, Start with 10 minutes a day. Get yourself a free workout app. So Nike training app has a lot of 10 minute exercise. Okay, and start with the beginning stuff. 10 minutes a day. You don't even have to get dressed for 10 minutes a day. You don't need any gym equipment for 10 minutes a day. 10 minutes a day is literally you get into the, sometimes I've done my exercises in the bathroom because I get to the bathroom, I'm like, oh crap, I haven't exercised. In my panties. And this is connected to number five, which is time. You're not going to get that booty after one day. Even though it feels like you did enough squats to deserve that booty, you're not going to get it after one day and you're not going to get it after one week. But I found this little thing on Pinterest, which I completely believe. 
and I did my research and it turns out to be true. And after the amount of times that I have exercised in the way that I live my life in terms of working out and exercising, I found this to be really, really true. It takes four weeks for you to feel it. So you will start to see the difference in your body. You'll have more energy. All of a sudden you last longer during the bedroom activities with your man. You start to have more energy in your life. You can run for longer. You can withstand for longer. And then it takes eight weeks for you to see it, you personally. Then you start to see that my bum looks, the other week, the other day I realized my bum is looking different. I was just like, hey, booty. Then in week 12, everyone else sees it. That flat stomach that you've been seeing for weeks now, someone else is gonna see it and compliment it too. Number six is to understand your body and how it works. So after a few weeks of exercising, you will start to see the changes and feel the changes in your body. But if you're not seeing the changes that you want to see, go see someone else, a doctor, a fitness instructor, or a professional in this field. And the reason why is because our bodies function a little differently depending on who you are, what you're eating, and how you're exercising. So I encourage you, go see a dietitian. Go see a professional. If you want to see big changes, go and see someone. Take out a little bit of that cash to invest in finding out how your body specifically functions. So you want to see someone who has experience in this just to check in and say that, you know what, I've been working out and I have been changing the way that I eat. Advise me on how I should move forward. This is the best thing you could do for yourself. Your body takes in activity and it takes in food differently to the next person. And you want to make sure that what you are doing is in line with the way that your body is specifically made. Number seven, food is important. You can't just go and eat whatever it is that you want to eat and exercise and still want to see results. It doesn't work that way. Everybody has a different philosophy on how to approach food when it comes to fitness. Many people advise that when you start exercising, cut down on your sugar, make sure you don't have sugar within the first 45 minutes of you exercising. No sugar whatsoever. Fruits, drinks, juices, nothing. Drink water for the first 45 minutes and then, re and then you can go into your food and your fruits and all of those other things. So cut down on the sugar, especially when you're starting out. And this is why it's important for you not to go onto a binge diet. Don't binge diet. That is like the worst thing you can do for yourself. You need to take a closer look at your food, what you're putting into your body and match your food to your fitness. And this just leads me to number eight. Understand your food. It is not about going on a binge diet and saying I'm gonna cut out the carbs and I'm gonna do this low, low fat or high fat or whatever it is that you're doing, you don't need to go on a binge diet. The point is to understand your food. What does certain food groups do for you and your body? And this is why it's so important to invest in seeing a dietitian. They'll let you know what food types work for you, how food reacts in your body. So it's not about going on some crazy diet. It is about understanding food. What are greens? Why are greens important for you? Why do people need to eat the different food colors that you need to have red, yellow, green, purple? Why? Why is it important for us to have certain levels of proteins? Why is it important? Why do certain people take shakes? Why do I take collagen shakes every day? Why do I take protein shakes every day? So my muscles can recover and rebuild. But you need to understand that for yourself. All right, beautiful people, that's all I have for you in terms of the fitness journey. The best way to start is just to get started. Do it right now, after this video. In whatever clothing you have, just exercise for 10 minutes. And tomorrow, do it again. And the day after that, do it again. And the more you get fit, the more you want to know about your food. And the more you'll start to think that it's not a bad thing to understand my food. See a dietitian. Understand that 10 minutes a day is all that I need. And you'll start to see and feel the difference and then other people will also start to see and feel the difference. And that consistency, honey, will be so easy for you. That's all I have for you. Give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it. Until next time, beautiful people, I'm Kapanish Shimangi and this is How I Do Things.